is your sense that if we get if we get a more hawkish Fed today, that poses a problem for Mario Draghi tomorrow? Well, to be honest, not really, not really, because, you know, the, the current level of the exchange rate is nothing that could warrant a significant reaction from the central bank, from the European, from the European Central Bank tomorrow. We think that what will influence the decision tomorrow uh, from the central bank, from the ECB is the latest batch of data, uh, which on growth side have not been particularly supportive. We've seen surveys which have come down in the first half of the first uh, quarter of this year and hard data a kind of follow through. So the, the growth picture is somewhat less supportive than what they had back in March. Um, on the other hand, the inflation picture is perhaps a bit more supportive uh, for a more hawkish stance for the ECB. You know, wage data are starting to come through a little bit stronger. Headline inflation is heading towards 2%. Yes, partly maybe oil, but this is all suggesting that, you know, this could be the first live meeting for the ECB tomorrow, really, uh, the first one in the year. So, Gianna, the big question, um, I'm heading to Riga tomorrow to attend this ECB meeting. Obviously, the question is, the number one question, whether or not they're going to set an end date for their quantitative easing program or kind of keep their optionality open. What else do you think I should be asking uh, Mario Draghi and co. in Riga tomorrow? Well, you know, this is clearly the live question. Uh, are they going to announce the end of uh, net asset purchases tomorrow or will they delay the decision? Uh, and if they don't announce it tomorrow, um, I think the important question will be when this is going to happen. You know, is it going to happen in July? What, what change to the information set that they currently have tomorrow uh, will, uh, what, what change will happen between tomorrow and July? Uh, will they delay until September? Uh, we all know, it seems that market is quite well aware that asset purchases uh, are going to end by the end of this year. The question is when they're going to announce. But more important, we think, in our view, is what other policy tools are they going to use uh, to fine-tune market expectations about the next uh, rate hike, the first rate hike? Are they going to change forward guidance? In what way are they going to change forward guidance? Are they going to tell us something about their reinvestment strategy? This is all something that will be crucially important once we know that uh, net asset purchases will uh, end. So if they don't announce that tomorrow, I think the whole range of questions about what comes next uh, is, is quite important. What's the spread between ending the APP and the first rate hike? Well, that's clearly one key question to ask to uh, Mario Draghi tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, you know, you at, present, at present, what they seem to have suggested, it's about six months, right? Okay. It's, it's, you know, uh, they've hinted to that kind of um, gap as a reasonable gap. Now, they could actually tell us something longer. You know, if they are concerned about the growth picture, mm -hmm. they could give us some forward guidance, you know, some guidance about how long it is going to take from the end of QE, presumably in December, to the first rate hike. Maybe nine months, you know, maybe it's more likely. This is, you know, the, the tool of policy, uh, the, the, the policy tools available for the ECB is shrinking, obviously, now. You know, we are approaching the end of QE. But there are still some available, and one of which is the forward guidance, which we know from previous experience, you know, the Fed, the Bank of England, is quite a powerful, a powerful tool towards the end of uh, QE.